So when you were growing up, all you wanted was a Ford Fiesta ST and you bought one and you loved it. But now you're a bit older. You have a medium sized dog, 2.4 children. Your bank balance is a bit fatter, but so is your stomach. Well, Ford would love to sell you one of these. It is called the Cougar ST line and it looks pretty damn good. This ST line trim level adds quite a few bits and pieces to your normal Cougar to set it apart. Most noticeable are the black grille and blacked out 18 or 19 inch wheels. These are the 19s. But there's also a new bumper, side skirts, roof spoiler, rear diffuser, black roof rails, tinted lights front and rear, scuff plates in the doors and these racy sport seats. This is now the top of the Cougar range. You can have either a two litre petrol or a two litre diesel. I'm busy driving the two litre petrol. And while the ST line looks like an ST product, it doesn't actually mean you get any performance upgrades. Although I actually don't really think this engine needs any performance upgrades. 177 kilowatts, 350 Newton meters of torque it's pretty healthy power and it means that you can get from 0 to 100 in under 8 seconds which is not bad so for your money for the ST package you get a dropped suspension tuned suspension tuned steering and loads of bits and pieces around the car and so for all this you will have to hand over about 550,000 of your hard-earned rands but if you want a couple of extra nice toys like for the car to park itself for instance and some bi-zen and headlamps and a panoramic roof you have to tick a few boxes and it'll take it all the way up to this test unit's price of about 620,000 rand and that is a fair amount of money for a cougar so is it all worth it so the cougar has this thing where if your hands are full you know with kids or stuff or kids and stuff you just swing your leg under and the boot opens. Hello? I did it earlier. But anyway, it has a powered tailgate, which is standard. You don't have to pay extra for it. And I must be honest, this boot is pretty big. It's a bit smaller than the Tigger ones on paper. But I mean, using the standard cooler box measurement test, that's a, that's a big boot. I mean, you can fit probably about, about eight cooler boxes in there. That's plenty. The only thing about the power tailgate is the button is over here. Obviously, left-hand drive car in America and Europe, so the button's on that side. So press it, get out of the way, and head to your driver's seat to start your adventure. Welcome to the inside of the Cougar Steel Line. Now this is where it goes a little bit pear-shaped for me because the whole center fascia here has been made out of a plastic which just looks a little bit down market. And I don't know why it needs to be like this. I mean, you've got this beautiful leather wrapped steering wheel with contrast stitching. The seats are of great quality. They feel awesome. Leather over here, contrast stitching, nice plastic around the cup holders and over here on the fascia. But just the center bit, it just, kind of cheapens the experience but other than that really well specced very comfortable place to cruise around in it's got sync 3 which has now been updated so you can pinch and zoom android auto apple carplay is great it doesn't have nav as standard you've got to add extra for that but while you're at it just add the nine speaker sony sound system as well it's about six grand for that extra and it sounds really really good i definitely spend a little bit more on that and all your buttons over here to control your radar guided cruise control if you spec the driver's package this is all really well designed the aircon's really well designed there's nice little touches like look at this rubber inlay in the coin tray so that your coins don't rattle when you drive around as a bit of a cherry on top you can go for the style package which gives you by zen and headlights and a panoramic roof but for me the real, real highlights of this interior are these seats. They are superb. I want them in my lounge. 
I want to watch TV in these seats all day. They're so nice. Well, one place where the Ford Cougar absolutely shines is in terms of ride quality and ride comfort. I took it on about a 200k cruise out of town and I can report that this is a superbly comfortable car to cover long distances in. And the good thing is about being on the open road that it drops the consumption of the engine quite a lot and that is one of the Achilles heels of the Cougar ST line. This petrol motor is pretty thirsty. Around town we were getting close to about 12 liters to the 100 and on the open road that dropped to under 9. So if fuel is a big concern for you, you probably want to opt for the diesel. It's got a load of torque, lots of power, it won't be boring to drive at all and it should be about, well on paper at least, 40% better on fuel than this petrol version. That is quite a big saving at the pumps. One of the big problems I'm having reporting on this Cougar Steel line is that there aren't any competitors really. I mean, if you stay in its price bracket of under 600,000 Rand and you ignore the Germans and the Jags and the Lexuses and that sort of thing, the Volvos, then you have to look at brands like Mazda, Hyundai for instance, and there's not much there. Subaru even discontinued its XT version of its Forester. You can't get the Tucson Sport anymore, although that was only available in a manual anyway. So about the only car you can compare this to right now is the Volkswagen Tiguan all-wheel drive Highline R-Line. That's its full name. And that car is a bit more expensive. It's about 50,000 Rand more expensive before options, but it's got a real corker of an engine, less power, than the Cougar ST, bit more torque though, but it does for some reason zero to 106.5 seconds, whereas this car will do it in under eight, as I mentioned. So don't know why, but it seems to be really quick off the line, that Tiguan. So if you want a sporty SUV, you want to spend about 600,000 Rand, it pretty much means you've got this and the Tiguan to choose from. And they're really, really hard to pull apart. Both have great infotainment systems, both handle really well, good amounts of power from the same two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. I suppose it almost might come down to which car you just prefer the looks of. In terms of sensible considerations uh, that you should probably make, the Ford has a longer warranty than the Volkswagen by a year, but the Volkswagen offers a longer service plan. And now it is time to address the elephant in the room. Now, if you've been visiting another planet, or maybe you live outside South Africa, you might not know that the Cougar nameplate has a terrible reputation in South Africa. This is the thing for me as a journo. I can't sit here and tell you that this car is never going to catch fire. I can't tell you that it's going to be reliable or not reliable. All I can really do is judge this car as a product, as a vehicle. Is it good or is it a bit shite? And there's good news. I think this is almost a great car, a very good car at the very least. And in fact, if you gave me one of these, I'd be happy to drive it every single day of my life. Never thought I'd say that about a Cougar. Hello, are you shopping for your next car? Struggling to find what you're looking for? With nearly 80,000 cars to choose from, you should go to cars.coza.